I love triangles. And God, a marriage works like a triangle. The closer you guys get to God, the closer you get to one another. In order to have team success in your marriage, you need a third person on your team, and that's God. And as much as you guys may want to have team success, as much as it sounds great, as much as it sounds good, unless you have God on your team, working with you guys within the marriage, it won't be successful. God has to be your coach. God has to be your star player. He has to be the person you go to whenever problems arise or you're moving to a different stage in your marriage. You constantly have to keep a connection with God or else it's going to be unsuccessful. That connection with God is going to help bring about team success because on every team, every player has a strength and a weakness. And there are weaknesses that both of you may have that you may that the other doesn't know about just yet. And there are weaknesses and struggles that you may have in your own private life, that, but now you're married now, so the other person sees that. So who's going to help you with those weaknesses? Your spouse can support you, and that's great. Your spouse can be there for you. You guys can be there for one another. Unless Jesus is your coach. Unless he's your trainer, unless he's your guide, those weaknesses are going to cause the marriage to collapse. Love is about team success. It's not about personal victories. Love is not about control. It is about support. You're not here to manipulate him. He's not here to manipulate you. You know, manipulation is something that the enemy uses to control people and get people to do what he wants but God uses what he uses love because we serve God out of love for him and so Anthony you're gonna serve Junan out of love for her and Junan you're gonna serve Anthony out of love for him it's a mutual thing no one's higher than the other person and as much as some Christians would say the man doesn't rule over the woman amen, amen. amen. <laughs> and neither does a woman rule over the man. Amen. You guys are there to support one another, Amen. to lift one another up. And when you have that mentality, when you have that mindset, you guys will be able to support one another as you're growing closer to God's kingdom, being more like Jesus. So what is love? Love isn't about us. It's not about our desires. It's not about what we want. Love is selfless. Not selfish. Selfless. Love says, I put my needs below hers. Her needs, her needs take priority and his needs take priority. I trust her that she's looking out for my best interest and I trust him that he's looking out for my best interest. <laughs> Without that trust there, you can't have love. Love is about one another. It's about growing closer to Christ. And the close, I just ask that you guys let Christ be your example as you learn to love one another. As you grow closer to one another, remember, you need to grow closer to Christ to grow closer to one another. Daily devotions, spending time in the Word together, leading your families closer to Christ, being that example. Spending time on your knees in constant prayer, asking God to search out your hearts and to teach you to better love one another. That's what love is all about. And so, Junette, if I could have your hand. And Anthony, is yours. Anthony, from this day forward, you're going to be guiding her. You're not ruling over her, you're guiding her. There's a difference. You're guiding her closer to Christ. You're the priest in your home. The spiritual life, God is calling you to be a spiritual leader in your household. He's calling you to guide her closer to Christ. And it's your responsibility to remind her that, hey, we need to be more like Jesus in the way we treat one another. It's your responsibility to guide her in all things. 
And Jeanette, as he's guiding you, it's your responsibility to support him. As he's the leader in the household, it's your responsibility to be there for him and watch over him. Times are going to get tough. He needs a strong woman by his side. And Anthony, let this be a symbol that today is the last day that you're in charge. <laughs> May God be with both of you guys as you continue to grow in love and grow closer with one another. So, at this time, I believe there's some rings that should be presented, right? No? no. You're not using jewelry? No? You sure? You don't want a ring? No ring? Oh. Amen. <laughs> oh my gosh, Anthony. Look how her face lit up when she saw you. You take this. this one. So now, Anthony, it's a big step for you. And these rings, these two rings symbolize a love that can't be broken. It symbolizes something. Remember that. And so now, Anthony, do you take Junan to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. I do. Oh my God. Junan, do you take Anthony to be your lawfully wedded husband? Yes, I do. Okay. You put the symbol yes, of your love. Yes, I do. Amen. the power invested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. We're going to have a closing prayer now, and we invite you to make your way to the barn for the reception. So let's bow our heads and pray and bless the food. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you that we can celebrate this union, this union of love between Anthony and Junan. And so, Lord, on this day of celebration, may we remember the love that you showed for us on the cross. And like their rings, may their love never end. Lord, bless the food that we're about to partake in. Watch over us, Lord God. Watch over this beautiful marriage. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We have to announce the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.